In Parashat Akev and many other places in the Torah, God promises us a life of blessings if we do good. But for such a spiritual book as the Torah, the blessings in our parasha seem a bit weak. Guess what guys? We will go into a land that grows wheat and barley, where we will be able to eat figs, pomegranates, dates, olives and grapes. Is this our reward? Is this what we hope to get for becoming spiritual, that we turn into well-fed peasants? And after last week's Torah reading, where we read that we should serve God out of love, with no hope of reward, doesn't mentioning a kind of presentation fruit basket as an inducement to do good lower the tone somewhat? And here we see the hidden magic of Judaism at work. In the Talmud in Erevin, Rabbi Hanan says that each of the fruit mentioned in this baffling verse is used as a measure in Jewish law. Here are some of them. A bone that is as big as a grain of barley can spread tumor, ritual impurity, to those who touch or carry it. If someone carries as much food as the volume of a dried fig from a house into the street on Shabbat, that will be a violation of the Shabbat law in certain situations. Only a complete wooden vessel can become tummy, ritually impure, and if it has a hole in its side or base large enough to let out a pomegranate, then it is considered broken and not able to become tummy. Someone violates the Torah laws of forbidden food if they eat as much as the size of an olive of something which is not kosher. Thus, through the traditions of the Talmud, we can see, see now that this verse has a completely different slant to it. Moshe was praising the land of Israel, not because it offered nice food to eat, but because even its foods would be used to help the Jewish people keep away from sin. The Hasidic commentary Bat Ayin goes a stage further, saying that the seven species of food for which Israel is praised do not only keep us from sin, they are also a beautiful avenue towards a closer connection with God. He explains that there are seven kinds of holiness which are readily available to us all, and that we can access these when we eat in the right way. I'll give you some examples of good eating. We needn't eat to have a nice taste in our mouths or to feel full up. We can also eat to care for our health so that we can serve God or so that we can say brachot and feel gratitude for what we eat. We can eat so that we can fulfill the laws of kashrut or so that our table should have the holiness of the altar in the temple. Maybe we eat in order to release sparks of holiness that are trapped in our food or we can share our meal experience with someone lonely or hard up who needs the experience of a nice bite to eat with a good friend. God specially designated seven foods through which to praise the land of Israel to show the Jewish people how they should eat, not to serve themselves, but to serve God and draw closer to him with seven different kinds of holiness. Now we can see what is expected of us Jews. It is so typical of Judaism that when we scratch the surface of the Torah just a little, we find that what seems just a quaint and old-fashioned sentence is actually a window onto a whole new way of life. In this case, one that comes at us through our knives and forks. And looking at this more broadly, it is again typical of Judaism that there need be no divide between the physical and spiritual in our own lives. And we need not feel that the highest blessing according to us Jews is a nice menu. Yet again, in typical Torah fashion, we have found that what looks like the end point of our spiritual journey, journey is really just the beginning, and that our lives are full of opportunities for holiness and love. We have a long way to go. There is lots to do.